<sighs> what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Listen, um, I say everybody, when you're first coming on, definitely introduce yourselves, like give a shout out to your city, let people know where you're from, uh, just so I know who's in the room whenever we're starting to talk. Um, it's another beautiful Saturday. Um, I'm trying to get all this shine off me, bro. Like this, this raw shade, buddy. Got your boy Glistener. But um, yeah, so do this conversations with Carrie. It's what we do is we talk about guitar stuff. We talk about um, questions that you may have with industry practice tips. Um, just various things that are going to try to help you become the best guitar player possible. So I do these things. Oh, we got Callie in the house. What's up, Flejo? Um, so I like to do these conversations just to kind of like, you know, have an opportunity to talk to you outside of me just playing my guitar all the time. I know um, you guys subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, definitely do that. And then click the bell to be notified because we drop this. But then usually um, throughout the time, um, we'll New York in the house. We got VA in the house, Virginia Beach. Um, I'll usually do like a lesson. So I don't want you to miss out on that the cool information. So. Um, just a little backstory. We got um, Buffalo, New York in here. We got Bakersfield, Cali in here. Hi, my name is Carrie. I've been playing guitar for well over 20. We got a camper in the house. What's up, Mark? Um, North Carolina house. Um, I played with Jason Trevillo. I played with Lettucey. I said I played with Chrisette Michelle, Melanie Fiona, uh, Grace Weber, Tori Kelly, uh, Two Chains, Ty Dolla Sign, Tyrese, and a host of others. Switzerland, Hill, yo, so. I've done a lot of stuff, so I'm where I'm. The reason why I do a lot of this is because I'm in a place in my career where I just want to give back. So Tokyo in the house, that's what's up. It's about giving back and helping empower the next uh, level of guitarists because I know what it feels like to, you know, want to be on stage or if you don't want to play professionally. Tanner Alabama in the house, what's up? Um, to at least have that opportunity to do it, and so I just what I want to talk to you guys. DC in the house, it's about giving you the tools so the way you can play the way that you want to. We got this sip in the house, got that cricket letter in the house. That's what's up. So that's what that's the reason why I, I do what I do. Uh, I'm at a place in my career where I don't have to, you know, I'm not chasing the like getting on stage anymore. I've done that. I love it. But I, I'm at a place now where I want to get back and empower the next generation or the next guitarist. Or if you want to play in your house, you just want the freedom to, if you hear something, grab your guitar and be able to play it. I want to be able to give you the tools. So that's the reason why I do what I do. If you're not familiar with my online academy school that I have, it's called Carrie's Camp. I highly suggest that you become a member because we have things that are definitely going to give you the tools to really be successful. YouTube is great, but it's just, it's like a light coat. It's just, it's a light coat. But if you really want to put your hands down in it and really bored, um, Carrie's camp is where it's at. And I, I, I've seen a lot of different kind of like guys that are trying to talk about how to play like, you know, Neo soul and try to tell you how to do a lot of stuff. And I'm just, I'm going to tell you, like they may throw out some names, but they don't, they don't really help you understand how to play. And really to be able to play because the proof is in the pudding. We've had a lot of testimonials. People will, will vouch um, for Carrie's Camp. And so, you know, I can say with confidence and let you know that this is something that we do um, because it's our passion. Just the same, as hard as I went to try to get on stage and play for artists, it's the same way, the level of intensity and attention to detail that I'll apply for Carrie's Camp. So, um, yeah, if you got a question, man, the floor is open, man. We did our formalities. Yo, hit me with some questions because I'm going to be on here for a few minutes to answer some of your questions. So, oh, uh, we got. San Antonio in the house. That's what's up. Um, so that's what it's all about. So if you got some questions, all right. My question is, when playing gospel bumps, it says, how do I mute my strings properly when playing? Um, so the technique is, see, the palm of your hand, you want to just rest that on the bridge of your strings. You don't want to push that hard. You just want to gently breast. And then you want to kind of perfect that. So like do it in your practice time so you can hear if you hear that muted sound. If you do, then you know you work that. If you don't, if it's still to apply a little bit more pressure, that's what I would tell you to do in that particular situation. It's a great question. Yeah, so, you know, that's the reason why we do what we do. What's up? In the camp, what's up? On the bridge, yeah. So you want to place your your the palm of your hand like on the bridge of the string. So... If I give you an example, so here is my guitar, right? I kind of want to like, this is the bridge. I kind of want to rest my hand like right on the bridge, like on the strings, just to get that little muted sound. All right, I missed one question. Let me go back. Um, how do you effectively perform hammer-ons? Practice, Nick Daniel. Practice, 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 practice. Um, but if you really want to know, more than just practice techniques, I can really show you how to get into it. I advise you to go to carriescamp.com. We have lessons that are extensive lessons that really show you how to work on the hammer-ons. Um, when are we gonna see you do something? 
Um, he's where he said he's an excellent. Uh, he's an excellent guitar player. Oh, so Tom Mish. Yeah, okay, cool. I can reach out and see what happens. Um, what model PRS do you own? I own the DGT and I own the um, Piezo. Piezo, how do you announce it? I own those two. Um, Plus Nightingale is such a beast of guitar song. Cool, that's what's up. Aha, aha. Uh, what's up, Carrie? What's going on? What's good? Chino Hill's in the house. Is theory super important uh, for your game or inspiration? Yes, theory is important because because it allows you just to have a different level of knowledge. Now, you can condense the theory you have. You don't have to become one of these guys that is so fixated on modes and all that kind of stuff like that. But yes, having some knowledge of theory is really important because it's gonna allow you to be able to play um, with a different kind of level of understanding. All right, it says, what scale would you say you play the most in R&B? The minor pentatonic? Uh, no, I don't play. Any kind of scales in R&B. I use a major scale to let me know what key I'm in, but there's not one major scale or one scale that we use to, for dominant for R&B because as an R&B guitarist, you're asked to do a lot of things. Some people are asked to play rhythm, some people are asked to play chords, some people are asked to pads, some people are asked to play licks. There's a whole lot of different things, so you gotta see whatever is, is best for you. Okay, um, I am a camper, and the reason I joined was because I'm getting so much good information uh, from your YouTube. I knew I needed help to support um, all of us from the, uh, I appreciate it. Listen, Mark, I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Can you clear up um, what you said, the seven notes in the major scale is minor? No, so when when I was talking about this, what else? So every now and then, depends on the, the progression, if the seventh note will be a minor chord or a major chord, you have to, sometimes you hear the flat seven. So you just gotta be, you gotta listen to the progression. There's no like staple like, oh, the seven is always minor, it's always major. Usually it's minor, but it just depends on the nature of the progression. All right, there's some good questions that are coming in. Bro, ATL, this is juggling on your upload speed. That fell out. Okay. It says, I've been considering Carrie's Camp. I'm an older beginner. Is it uh, for true beginners? Yes. Carries Camp is for true beginners. That's we help you. Literally, we have roadmaps that show you how to get from beginner to intermediate. And if intermediate, you want to go to advanced. Or if you want to play at a professional level, we will help you get there. So I'm great. I'm doing well. It says, hey, man, I've been watching your videos for years. Thank you so much for inspiring young black men to keep at it. Man, that's what's up, Levi. I appreciate that. Uh, hi, Carrie. Ken from Malaysia. What is the most uh, used chord progression in R&B? Most is relative, so it just depends. I like a, I mean, I, I played a lot of two, three, six. I played a lot of four, six, two, three. I mean, it's just a different combination. That's why it's really important to understand the number system. If you're not really versed on the number system, go to carriescamp.com. I have courses for days that are really gonna help you spell out and understand how to use the number system because R&B is like, progressions are different just depending on the, um, the producer's ear. Jordan, come on, man. Looking forward to you joining, man. Jordan, we want to have you in the camp. Looking forward to having you in the camp. All right, who was your favorite Neo Soul artist? Favorite is relative. Um, I like Angie Stones, man. I like Erica Badu's. I like the Jill Scott's. I like um, uh, and Algebra Blessed's. I mean, there's so many. There's Chocolate. There's so many great, great dope artists. I like Moonchild. Um, I like, man, there's so many, I, if I start naming stuff, I'm gonna miss some people, so I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, do your homework, do your research. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see, what else, what's up, what's up? Okay, what guitarists do you advise us to listen to? Um, I mean, there's so many. You can listen to myself, you can listen to Peyton, you can listen to uh, J-Mo, you can listen to Agape Jerry, you can listen to Isaiah Sharkey. The thing about it is, is you can listen to them, but understand. That's the thing. A lot of them don't teach per se. So that's why it's good for you to have a basis where you can go. That's why Carrie's Camp is so important because we, we show you what a lot of these guitars are doing. Like, I'm not trying to be funny, but like, the way that I play and the way that I sound, a lot of people mimic that. Either other guitarists that do it or whatever, but I'm explaining to you like why I'm doing that. So that way you can apply those same principles and use it for your playing. Um, uh, roll Tide, listen. We stay ready. We stay, we stay ready. You hear me, Paul? We stay ready. 
Um, do you struggle with any Line 6 pods? I've never played the Line 6 pods. I play, I have the Helix, so I can't, I can't vouch for that. Um, all right, so happy to be a part of the Carries Camp. Robert, man, we're glad to have you on, man. Like, listen, to have you a part of Carries Camp. Anybody that's a part of Carries Camp, I'm telling you, like, it's family. That's what it's all about. Uh, Eric Badu music is so complicated. It's not complicated. It's all about a feel. It's all about a vibe. Once you understand the formula, everything becomes really simple. That's why I say Carries Camp will show you how to dissect the formula and use and apply the principles in order to be successful. Um, quick tips for alternate picking fluidity. Is it better to start with your first strum down pattern? Man, that's honestly, when it comes to like pick and strumming or whatever, you have to do whatever is best for you because each guitar player is different. Um, if you notice most of my videos, I use a lot of my pinky because when I was smaller, like it was hard for me to reach with my ring finger. So I started to use my pinky and I've just developed that technique over the years. So that's why my pinky is a lot stronger than a lot of people's. So you have to do whatever's best for you at like, you know, trying to figure out things whenever you're playing. So it makes the most sense, you know? That's what it's all about. Put this helmet back. <laughs> Um, is Carrie's Camp accepting new students? Josiah, yes, we are. We we just had some new students join last night. Um, I did this really incredible like uh, live Q and A with a lot of students that were doing the lick challenge, and we just opened. So it's open. So if you want to go, go to Carrie'sCamp.com, and you can sign up. And like, we'll let you have it for seven days for free to kind of test drive it to see if it's right for you. And then. If you feel like it's right for you, then come on, man. We, we, with open arms, open arms, <laughs> we're ready for you to come. All right. What exercises or uh, says, what do you exercise your hands and your fingers? It says, do you exercise your hands and your fingers? Yes, I constantly do. There's like a apparatus that I have that I squeeze. I don't know if you guys know about that. And there's one where you can do individual fingers. I use those as well. Um, What's your favorite guitar currently? This is it, man. Listen, it's a Jazzmaster Elegante by Iconic Guitars. Listen, I had an epiphany um, the other day on my Instagram. I've been fighting it, and I've been fighting it. But like, when I whenever I play this guitar, the Jazzmaster, it just it has my personality. It fits exactly what I wanted to do. It's the sound that's in my ears. Now, over the years, your sound will morph. I used to be a diehard. Strat guy. That used to be a diehard PRS guy. Now I love all of those brands, but I'm saying that this right, right now, hands down, the Jazzmaster by Iconic Guitars, the Elegante, I'll put that guitar up against anybody. Is the truth. So I'm letting you know that's that's where I'm at right now. So I, I'll sit on that with confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel that. Uh, <laughs> that was a great question. Um, I first heard you play a song with Tori Kelly. Um, you changed my life, man. Thank you so much. I listen. I really appreciate that. That was an opportunity that like only God could open up for me. Cause, whew, that's the great thing, man. It's about being accessible, being good at your craft, and then people see your talent, and then they reach out to you. That's just that's all I can say. Um, do you listen to Kanye? I've never listened to that. I've never listened to that music. Um, what do you do when you feel stuck? I put on um, a Spotify playlist. I will listen to different genres and something, even if it's not the first couple of records or whatever, I'll just cycle through until something grabs me and I'll listen to it and I'll be like vibing. And I'll be like, all right, cool. Like slowly but surely, I'll go grab my guitar in order to feel like I want to start playing. And that's what I do. All right, says, Carrie, will you ever do a deep dive on some of the old um, soul greats such as Spanky Alford? Um, Robert, um, I'll give you concepts. Spanky is a one of a kind, and I know people try to duplicate that sound, but it's it's a lot of gospel. It's a lot of um, R and B kind of fused together. So it's a deep dive, but it takes a lot to really like dissect and understand because it's it can be over people's heads. So I, not that I think that people can't digest it, but it's just a lot of material. So it would take years, honestly, for people to really just you have to study Spanky and study him. You just can't. That's not one of these things that you could just be like gloss over it and do whatever you really got to study Spanky to really understand that. So I, I try to appeal to the masses, not just one specific, you know, person. Um, tips for dialing in a good 90s R&B tone. Do you ever use um, digital amps simulators? Levi, I 
do. Um, the thing that you would have to do if you want to down a good 90s R&B tone, you probably got to have some chorus in there because I think not chorus was really big back in the 90s. So it's about adding some chorus and make sure it's not like too, uh, too much where it's like kind of like a, a tremolo, tremolo sound or whatever. So I was just having the right amount of chorus. That's what I would tell you if you want to have a 90s kind of R&B kind of sound. Um, oh, the mini chorus is fire. I appreciate it. Um, okay, we answered that question. Answer that question. Okay, let's see what else we got. Tommy Emmanuel, I don't know who that is, so I can't really answer that question at this particular moment. Some great questions. Oh man, there's a fly in here. So frustrating. All right, song lesson, you remind me. Uh, by Usher, you said F major, F sharp major. All right, it says, but chords you play are G flat major. Why say major keys? I don't ever say G, G flat to me is not, nobody says G flat, and, I, and I'll put that out there. Everybody says F sharp, nobody says G flat. It's just essentially the same thing. Get caught up in the semantics, it's the same thing. Nobody says G flat. If you go anywhere, somebody says G flat, you probably gonna look at them and be like, hmm. So don't say G flat is called F sharp. Okay, it's F sharp, not G flat. All right, cool. I just wanted to clear that up. So don't get caught up in the semantics, Eddie. Like it's G flat. It's not G flat. It's F sharp. It's the same. It's a, it's the same note. My dude. It's the same note. All right. So I think so many times what happens is guys are trying to look for like and won't want to be like hella critical. It's it's the same note. Okay, it's the same freaking note because this is G. If you wanted to call it a flat, you go a half step down. Nobody calls it G flat. Everybody calls it F sharp. It's F sharp. So it's F sharp. Nuggets F sharp. Never say G. People, when I hear people say G flat, I, I know what kind of guitar player they are. So I'm just saying, like A flat, E flat. That's it. <laughs> what can you tell me about harmonics? It just depends what you want to know about harmonics. Um, what do you do to work with speed? I play with the metronome, so I keep it super slow. Remember, slow and steady, steady and smooth. You perfect it, you get it under there, you want to develop that muscle memory, then you start to increase that metronome in order to play at the desired speed that you're looking for. Speed is not everything. So I, I want to stress that again. Speed is not everything. I know everybody's trying to shred and try to speed. Speed is not everything because if you can be fast and not clean, it does not make a difference. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Slow and steady wins, wins the race. Um, Carrie, can you talk about playing more with less and give us an example? So I will just talk about it. So playing more with less, um, even when it comes to pedals, you don't need a huge pedal board. You don't need a huge spaceship. You can just use a few pedals and be effective. Because when you think about it, there's only a, a certain amount of things that you're using in order to, when you're playing on stage. That's why I say, say beginners, you need a tuner, overdrive, delay, reverb. You don't need all of these extra things. Like the more you start to kind of finesse and grow in your craft, then you, of course, you can start to stretch out, but just less is more. It's all about playing. Placement, like we talked about using the, um, the minor pentatonic. There's a lot of nuggets in there. You don't have to sound bluesy. You can use the same scale, but pick out certain kind of notes with phrasing and, and, and be super effective. So you don't have to know all of the modes and all that other stuff. That stuff sounds good. Like if you want to talk and be in like these little, you know, like barbershop conversations or whatever and be like, oh, well, what mode you are... Can you grab the guitar and play? That's all that happens. So I teach you things that are effective that you can carry around with you, that you can use in your toolbox, that you can apply to your playing. So don't get caught up into like trying to do so much to make yourself sound good. But if you can't even play and articulate what you know, then it doesn't matter anyway. All right. Uh, when you get a chance, do yourself. Go to Tommy Manuel's song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I will check it out. All right, any tips on how to maintain constant progression and stay out of the rut? So, so if you want to do that, I tell you, you need a road 
map. So that's what Carrie's Camp does. Carrie's Camp gives you a roadmap to help you overcome those humps that we all have, those ruts, different kind of plateaus. I'm teaching you. He was great, but he wasn't at his full-time level until he got the right kind of coach. And I'm telling you, like, I'm that coach. You can call me Coach K, Coach Carrie's Camp, like, whatever you want to call me, I'm going to help get you to that level. That's what it's all about. All right. Any back again. That's what's up. Glad to have you in the house. Some great questions. Um, your thoughts on upgrading parts on my Squire Strat to increase tone. Yeah, Paul, I would tell you to do it. Like, if you're thinking about, you love the way that your Strat feels, you just don't like the way it sounds, up, upgrade it. Yeah, like definitely get different pickups. Um, pickups change the life and the tonality of your guitar. I would definitely do that. That's something that you could definitely do that'll help you like maintain and, and get at a better level. Uh, thank you for the clarification. Love Carrie's program. Appreciate it, Eddie. Glad to have you on. Um, all those people that are brand new that are here, that just so kind of happen to follow and stumble upon this channel. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do, do so. Click the bell to be notified. So when we're dropping a new video, if we're doing a live or any kind of teaching on here, you're not missing out. Um, also, for those that want to do an even deeper dive, because the stuff we have on YouTube is great, but it's just it's a light coat, man. It's a light coat, but you're looking to try to go even deeper. I highly suggest going to carriescamp.com. It's really going to help you um, because you need to have a roadmap. You need to have somebody, a mentor, a coach, and I'm that person. I'm volunteering. I'll sign up and we'll help you out. All right, what do you think about the PRSC tier guitar? So the only SC that I have played that I really like is the Paizo, Piezo, however you want to announce it, um, pronounce it. I like that guitar. Everything else I cannot vouch for because I've never put it in my hands. I've never played it. But this particular model of guitar is great. Um, which artist do you, are you working with at the moment? Honestly, uh, at the moment, I don't think I'm working with anybody. I've done a couple different shows, um, but I'm not currently working with anybody. I'm kind of getting ready to uh, take a break. So if, I don't know if y'all can see all this stuff in the background. Y'all see these balloons? My daughter will be here next month. So I'm kind of like taking a break um, from like touring and all that road life. Plus the pandemic, nobody's really doing a lot of things. There are a few performances here and there. Most of the stuff that I do is virtual but I'm, I'm kind of taking a break, so. Are you familiar with Abasi guitars? No, Justice West has one of them. Yeah, Justice West, I saw, I seen him playing, but I'm not, I've never played one. So I'm, I don't, I can't, again, cannot vouch for something that I've never put in my hands. I know it's not your, your thing right now, but I really want to hear you, your opinion on Spanky, um, Spark Amps. Um, a lot of reviews are done, da, da, da. Yeah, if you, If they will give it something, send me one. I'll I'll check it out. I'm all about it. I'll play on it. And I'll try to fill it out. Appreciate that, Mark. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm gonna field a few more questions and then I gotta get ready. <laughs> I really enjoy your videos, bro. I've learned a great deal. Um, what's the name of the 335 mile? It's a um, Eastman. It's an Eastman. I think 464, and I got it modded with uh, Seymour Duncan 59 pickups. Mm. Hey, what's good? I really hope you're doing well. Much love. JR, I'm doing great, man. I cannot complain. Uh, great teacher, by the way. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, life is great, man. Look, I got a chance to do some performances last week. We're teaching. We're empowering the next generation. I'm having a, my wife's having a baby next month. I'm, man, like, life is good. I cannot complain. Like, life is great. You know what I mean? I get to talk to you guys on the weekends. Like, life is good, bro. Seriously. Um, what's a good way to know... When you're ready to cross over into a different level, um, guitar proficiency, like intermediate versus advanced, it's knowledge of the guitar and knowledge of what you're able to do on the guitar. Braxton, that's a great question. So I would say, like, can you identify, like, if I gave you a couple of different songs and I was like, here's a guitar, like, what key you're in? What's the chord progression? Can you spell that out? Those are things that, like, the knowledge of the guitar. It's not just about how many years you've had the guitar, but it's about, like, your ability to translate the information that you know to articulate to the way that you play. Um, appreciate all the congratulations, man. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Cool beans, man. Depends on what, what your style is. You know, Gibson makes some good stuff. Iconic. Uh, Jennings Guitars. Uh, you got... Uh, Sir makes some good stuff. Eastman makes some good stuff. PRI. So it just depends on what, what kind of style you like. Can you show the Jazz Master again? Of course I can show you the Jazz Master again. This is, this is my baby. This is Ariel, okay? 
For those that don't know, this is Ariel. She is a MFing beast, okay? All right, let me see what else. Which instruments your kids are playing? So my oldest sings in the um, community choir, like boys choir for the city, and he also plays keys. He's the only person. The other guys, they make noise, but they, I mean, it's, I don't force them to make music. If paint and do whatever, let's go about it. I'm, as long as you're the best at whatever you do. Um, you said you don't need to know modes. Then how do you become fluent in improvising? Practice. Modes don't help you. Just because you know what the modes are it will not help you. So what you have to do if you want to become practice, proficient in improvising, play a lot of different records and then practice. So or, or join a church and play for a church. Church is the best way. And I think that might be it. Do you listen to UK R and B? Yes, I've listened to some UK R and B. They got some hitters over there. They got some. They got some crazy hitters. Normally, usually on East Coast it starts at twelve, um, and then three hours back from that will be West Coast time. But yeah, I usually start at twelve. Like I feel like it's a good time for me. Mostly uh, the kids have already eaten, everybody's chilling. I got a little bit of quiet time and I could just focus with you guys. Can you please do a tutorial on Brent Fire's song? I will add it to the list. I have a lot of songs that people are requesting all the time. I'll add it to the list. Um, I'm gonna take a few more questions and then I have to get ready to go to get ready for the day. So, like I said, brand new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell to be notified. Um, if you like the stuff that I'm teaching, but you're looking to go even deeper, go to carriescamp.com. Um, we just had a lot of people sign up yesterday. We, we did this amazing thing with those who did the lick challenge. It's a great thing. It's a great platform. Um, Carrie's Camp gives you the tools and it's... I did a one-on-one -on -one with one person and man, like I think his name was Sean, man, we had a great time. And just hearing his growth in the matter of minutes we played um, was incredible. All he just needed somebody just to point him, show him where to point his compass at. And that's all it takes sometimes is somebody to help you to know where to point your compass at, and you know, where, which direction to go. All right, I got to finish Strat. Do you think that was a good decision or should I have gone with the PRS? King, it really just depends. I mean, I I love strats and I love PRS, but it all depends on what kind of style and what your hands do and what it sounds like in your hands. If it sounds great in your hands, then stay with a strat. Uh, does Carrie's Camp address tone and gear? Yes, Paul. We have a whole setup that talks about tone and gear and everything. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm recording some Neo Soul slash hip hop soon. Any um, common mistakes you hear for a first time beginner artist? This is any common mistakes you hear all the time in beginner artists. Uh, confidence, I think that that's it. And then thinking that sometimes they know more than what they know. And sometimes like they'll tell you like, usually the first, roughly like the first idea is probably the best idea because they'll come up with multiple ideas and you just have to be patient. So when you're working with a brand new artist, be patient, give your advice. But then like at the end of the day, you're hired to work for them, not the other way around. So if you remember that, let your ego go, then it won't be that much of an issue. What types of, it's good for intermediate. Oh, happy birthday. Yo, I appreciate it. Birthday is coming up next Thursday. So Thursday, it, yo, man, let, you, let your people know, man. Give me, a, give me some B-Day love, bro. Virgo's in the house. Uh, I got caught up. Yeah, I saw the birthday stuff. I got hype. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Let me go back and read some other questions that I may have glossed over. I'm sorry if I missed your question. It's not intentional. I want to let y'all know that it's not intentional. It's a lot of stuff that's firing at me quick. I'm trying to grab as much as possible. Um... 
when I'm going to market some K2S gear. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I did shirts back in the day. I did coffee mugs back in the day, but it's just like it's there's there's not enough of a uh, a need or a want for the material, so it, I don't really necessarily feel like it's important for me to make it. So that's that. I mean, not that I won't do it. It's just like it's just not important at the moment. Is relative pitch something you can develop um, naturally from years of playing, or do I need a structured practice? I mean. You can't, I mean, you can always practice the concept of you listening to records and kind of trying to be like, okay, what key is that in? You know, so relative pitch does come over years in time, but you can actually massage that muscle and work on that muscle in order to increase your ear to be able to hear something and be like, oh, it sounds like they're playing in like C major. Okay, it sounds like the progression might be uh, two, three, like, and you can just check and see like, oh, was that right? The more you can do it, the better you'll become at it. Thank you for the videos. They're very helpful. Appreciate that, Richard. Happy birthday. Man, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, definitely. Are you getting your own custom gear in the near future? King, that is something that I've talked about. I'm just trying to find the right uh, company that we can work together with. When I, I'm really keen on price point. Like, I don't want to be like, I can get a guitar made and it costs $3,000 and only three people get it. That makes no sense to me. So I'm trying to find something that I'm able to work and partner with a company. We can make something that makes sense in the grand schemes for the masses. That's what I'm all about. I don't want three people with my guitar because I know how hard it is to get a guitar and everything else. So I want to make sure that everything is right. Eddie, I appreciate the birthday love, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's a great question. All right. I'm going to take one more question. It's got to be good. Make sure it's good. Make sure it's good. I'm listening. I'm reading, I should, I should say, because <laughs> you guys aren't necessarily talking to me, so. Happy birthday, oh, 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 oh. Or says, I think you would be an awesome partner with Ibanez. Ah, we can look, we can look and see. All right, what's your advice for us that is still struggling to get how to be good. So I would say, honestly, if you're, if you're struggling with trying to figure out how to be good, go to carriescamp.com. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate or advanced, we have a roadmap and we have over, I mean, I can't even tell you how many lessons. I think it's well over 600 videos, lessons that we have and we're constantly adding to the site, plus all types of bonuses and master classes. Um, and we have something called Carrie's Corner where we talk to some of the industry guitar players. They give you advice and they tell you how they got on and all that kind of stuff. Go to carriescamp.com. That's definitely going to help you get over the hump because you need that. It says, how long did it take you to be able to play what you heard? It took me years. Honestly, it took me years um, because I didn't have teachers that knew exactly what to do. I just had like guys at church that would be like, man, it sounds like it's in this key. I played a lot of quartet. So, the, I mean, it was just, I had to get what I could get. So if I had a good teacher, like how... A person that's structured and has a course or whatever, it wouldn't have taken, taken me as long. Yeah, Ronnie, look into the camp, man. I'm trying to tell you, like, I'm not just saying it because it sounds good. I'm telling you something that I know. Um, it's a good thing. It's going to definitely help you out. Appreciate that, Walter. All right, I'm going to get ready to go because... You see, we got this baby shower stuff. Got it, it's all set up. I got to get ready to, you know, change my outfit and everything. Get ready for this virtual thing. Um, love you guys. You guys have a great Saturday. Stay safe. Listen, if you if you want to grow in your craft, go to carriescamp.com. Um, if you're brand new to this channel, go ahead and click the um, the bell to be notified. Subscribe. Do whatever because I want to see you guys grow in your craft. That's what it's all about. And then if I happen to be out on tour, if you're on tour or whatever, and you happen to be in my city, yo, hit me up and be like, yo, I'm playing tonight. I love to check y'all out, man. Once, you know, everything kind of clears out and gets cool or whatever. So love you guys, man. You guys stay safe. You keep doing your craft. Keep being great. Keep, keep being phenomenal. And listen, I want to see you guys one day on stage. I want to see you guys on TV and be like, you guys do a lick or a fill. And I'll be like, yo, that person was a part of the camp or either they've subscribed to my YouTube channel. I would love to hear that. All right, you guys have a good one. Stay safe. Stay, you know, stay wonderful. I'll see you guys later. All right, love, peace, and hair.